today, uh, overview of psionic abilities, right? That's what we did today. Cool, it's a fun one. So, <clears throat> the fundamental basis of learning psionics is that once you develop some brain, body, clarity, grounded, centered, shielded, right? Start shuffling around and scooping stuff in your brains is then at some point you get enough clarity to get amplitudes to which things around you and within you occur, which we basically define as the bending of matter and energy to our will, right? And if it's, and, and that can include the perception of matter and energy around us in ways that we're not normally used to perceiving with the five normal senses, which will, we have a whole other thing that we're going to talk about the psionic senses. So when your body and your brain get enough connection and clarity through practice, diligent practice then you can have amplitudes of things that start to affect what's happening inside, outside, and perceptions. These are all manifestations of psionics. Anything that one can do to affect or perceive using those psionic skills can be defined as a psionic skill. Right. So we talk about psionics as the larger umbrella of everything. And then under that umbrella, there's all these different skills, which through some practice, discipline, training, you can do consistently and regularly and accurately. Any of the th things that you can do specifically to accomplish a specific task is a skill. Right. So skills that we've covered, uh, precognition is a skill, right? It's a thing that you practice, you learn, so you can do that thing. Also helps build and train your brain so that you can do other skills. Every skill that you would spend time on is going to help your brain be able to do other skills because it's strengthening the whole brain muscle, mind muscle thing that we talk about so that it helps everything. But there are some... I want to say uh, almost like skill trees in which there are places where you start and develop a skill in order to be able to develop another skill or a skill that's more advanced than that, where usually there's a precursor of learning skills before you're going to be able to do that skill, right? So, and we often start at two different distinctions of types of abilities to categories of psionic abilities, which we refer to as soft abilities and hard abilities. And this is kind of the best um, definition that somebody came up with. I don't know. Sometimes I don't like it, but it, it's what we do at the moment. It's in the manual and maybe I should make another suggestion for a change in the manual. Um, Basically, because uh, a soft ability doesn't mean that it's soft um, or doesn't mean that it's easier necessarily. Um, it just means that it's an ability with which there is not a tangible effect from which you can observe immediately. And therefore, it's a soft ability. An ability from which you can perceive an immediate tangible change of some kind or impact of some kind is considered a hard ability, right? So there's sort of just of a def the defining line is really what is affecting reality is sort of that's the definition of hard and soft. So something that's softly affecting reality isn't going to move it. it, can affect it, perceive it, understand it, read it, influence it. But that's not the same thing as moving it telekinetically, which is a hard ability, right? And not that it's super difficult. Um, and I say that because 
even with dampeners, which uh, make developing certain skills difficult here on planet Terra right now. Sorry, not sorry. Sure. Dealer. Um, when I taught in-person classes, had no problem getting 100% of the students in the class to be able to do telekinesis on a tiny object in a trainer by the end of the class, no problem. So being able to teach, demonstrate, and have someone replicate it is not hard. It's not hard, right? So it's it's easy enough to do that. So in that sense, it's not hard to do, right? Um, it Certainly the way I learned it was much harder, <laughs> but I won't go into that story right now. Um, but I was also in a high acceptance environment, which mean I, I caught on more quickly. But that's also part of what the, the in-person class were about by having a bunch of people in one room for several days can kind of hammer on, here's what your left brain needs to understand. Here's what your right brain needs to understand. Bring it all together, do some stuff. Ta -da, now go replicate that. And the thing that I really liked about changing that to the online course to be honest with you is that the model the seminar model is super flawed in that regardless of what you're teaching or doing people come to that event for an, a certain number of days to, and they get an experience and they get knowledge and they get information but almost never get follow through because you go wow i learned that and i did that cool all right go home and practice you know, out of how many people go home at that point with no other, like, you can do it and high fiving and guidance, we'll just do it. And it turns out not a lot, not a high percentage number of people. Uh, and it's part of why I developed this theory that I call the 1% model, which is most teaching methods, uh, especially for development, meditation development, any psionic development improvement, self-mastery, whatever you want to call it. Um, people have all kinds of different things that they call different things, but they're using a lot of the same fundamental tools to do things in the brain, rewire the brain, connect the body and the brain and get people to an experience, being able to feel and change matter and energy in their space to have an experience that you can do it too and tries to get them motivated, you know, to be awesome. The problem is that when you have this model of instruction, that you have about a 1% success rate of the people that show up. Uh, every 100 people that show up, one of them is going to actually be able to take what you've shown and done and demonstrated and run with it and do something with it without more help, which that's a stupid model. I think that's a dumb, 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 stupid model. Why would anybody teaching anything when able to look at, at not beyond the like, here's what I'm presenting. I'm presenting some information. I'm being a good teacher. There, I'm done, right? How about taking it one more step to like, how many of these students are absorbing that information? How many of them are doing anything with it? How many of them are able to go one day, two days, three days with any kind of impactful change or changing what they're doing in their habits of the reality or changing their meditative practice or changing their daily habits and practice by having a daily meditative practice. How many people do that? And when it's the numbers are so tiny, when you start to actually look at those numbers and get that feedback, who as a teacher with any self-respect of wanting to go beyond just like i came up with a good teaching model and i taught something i'm a good teacher yay how about you're a good teacher when your students learn something and when more of your students can absorb the information and learn something i feel like i'm fortunate i had some great teachers when i was young to have as a good example of what it means to be a good teacher and i feel like you got to go way beyond here I have something good for you and I presented it well. There, I, I'm done. Like teaching goes way beyond that point. And because people have questions, everybody's different. Uh, people have different obstacles to sometimes understanding things. I have found 
more often than not, I can explain something one way and a certain number of people will understand. And if I explain it another way, a certain number of people will understand. So usually if I explain it away and I say, okay, questions, then I can make sure the people who didn't quite get it the way that I explained it, I can re-explain it one of the other ways and hope that then the whole room starts to get, get it, right? Because I'm learning as a teacher, there are certain ways, certain people's brains hear and learn information. And sometimes there's like five or six different ways in which you can say the same thing to make sure that 50 different people absorb it properly. So I want people to learn and I don't want them to just learn like this is about practice. This is about something you do every day. This is about something that you take on in your life to be a better person, whatever that means for you. I'm not trying to judge anybody's what that means to be a better person, but having a better mind, having a stronger brain, having a better connected brain, body, mind makes you a better whatever you are, right? Whatever that is, makes you a better whatever. So I want people to learn stuff. You want people to learn stuff so they can be better at whatever they're doing. And if that's the goal, then it goes beyond just like, here, I want to teach you some shit. Good luck with that. How about let's learn some stuff? How about let's walk through it? So changing the teaching model, I think, has been a huge benefit to like people being able to actually do it. So I'm way, I'm way happy that we changed the model. The only, the only thing that I would like to be able to do is do the TK class again, like as an in-person class, because it never fails for people who are having any struggle to go, okay, let's, let me show it to you right now. And then you do it. And then, okay, we're going. And, and then standing there doing that and in a room full of people, it just like dominoes, right? So it's so much more important to have everybody learn stuff. So the 1% model sucks. So um, I'm we're way happier to have a system in which we can make sure there's questions get answered and we can really walk through all the steps and stuff, right? Because there's a way more to learn than, you know, even can be imparted in, you know, a, a week-long seminar, two-week seminar, a month-long intensive, right? And we would still be, have stuff to cover. So this is a way better method, I think, for people to learn. So, and the results of the feedback that we get from students confirms that. So, um, so any skills that you start with is just like the base of your, of your skill trees. And you pick any soft or hard abilities, you work on that and you develop more and more and more and more. So we're going to talk about today a little bit is more of those abilities. And I rambled for a minute or a few to talk about why I think it's important to teach a certain way, but there, I got my soapbox about that. Um, anyway, I get, I had good teachers who, who felt like if students weren't learning or getting it, well, then that's why they were a shitty teacher. Like they weren't a good teacher because they had a good lesson plan. They were a good teacher because the students understood that lesson plan and they could answer the questions and they could give them an assignment that would make them understand it better. Like that's what being a good teacher is, is helping your students fucking learn. If you're not helping your students learn, what kind of a fucking teacher are you? I'm just going to say that. For any other teachers out there in the world who aren't helping their students learn and are expecting them to jump through all these crazy hoops or over these weird barriers, like how about help your students learn so that everyone can learn and do it instead of making it stupid? Anyway, there, now I'm done. Can I be done? Cool. Skills have we done? We've done remote viewing. We've done precognition. We've done dowsing. We've done, what else have we done? We did, oh, we did animal communication. We talked about telepathy with animals. Okay. Talked a little bit about self-healing, uh, programming, your field and your body stuff, right? Okay. So let's uh, talk about the easy ones, right? Telepathy. Everybody knows that one right? Telekinesis, that's another easy one. Everybody knows that one. Um, pyrokinesis, cryokinesis. Those are two of my favorites. Um, so telekinesis, you're learning to move energy, start learning between your hands. It's not dependent on your hands once you learn it proper, but you start that way. Um, and you're 
using energy from your body to grab onto an impact of physical object. By learning that skill um, and developing some amplitudes with that, you can go another step with that same skill set of doing the same thing focusing the same energy from your mind body from your hands to have an extra impact which instead of just trying to grab onto something you want to spin the molecules subatomic particles faster and faster and faster and that will heat it up causes heat physics right we're not using, we're not lighting it on fire by magic, right? We're setting something on fire using physics. Well, how do things heat up? Molecules spin that heats up, that causes things to boil and burn, right? So the more you can make something spin, the closer you can get to a flash point and cause ignition. Um <sighs> gonna have to build a trainer for this one and i'm gonna have to build a new tk trainer and i'm I, probably gonna have to build a bunch of trainers to like for to show people how you can do these basic development stuff on them um the pk trainer pyrokinesis trainer is a container of a one cubic centimeter of water in which you have a digital thermometer attached to it so that you can see your hundreds of a degree, hundreds of a degree change. You want to, you know, a nice science, super scientific one. Again, in a housing that is not being affected outside from that, that you can keep will that be at a stable room temperature, right? So that when you're starting at a stable room temperature, whether you're trying to go up or down, um, you'll be able to notice those tiny, 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 tiny at first movements of temperature up or down um, by using physics. So heat it up, spin it around. You want to freeze it, cool it down, slow it down. So that's slowing the molecules down until they don't move anymore. And when they don't move anymore, then they get super cold. So, um, and most people, when they start this process, you know, it's like basic, basically all you're really doing is slightly warming and slightly cooling a cubic centimeter of water, right? Which is, it's not much, it's not fancy, right? You're not gonna, it's not an impressive party trick, but it's physics at that point. You, you are making a tangible impact of something that is temperature change. And it is only about making more of that faster to get to flash point or freeze point. Um, the easiest thing to start with when you really want to like make something hot, hot and try and set something on fire is a matchstick because you, you go for the match head, which got phosphorus in it, which is going to ignite faster than the wood itself. Right. So make something with a slightly lower, easier flash point to hit. But again, like everything else, especially with the hard abilities. And one of the reasons why I'm a super fan of them is because they push development in a way because you experience a tangible, oh, I did that, oh, shit, right? Instead of being like, did I do that? Did I really do that? Was I imagining that? Am I, mm? and you can, and and it, belief is a, cra is a crazy thing, quite literally, um, because you can have too much belief in what you're doing and have it not work because you believe more then you're being practical. So belief is not the ultimate power. Don't let anybody tell you that it is. It's important, but it can also get in the way. So it can it can be something that's not rational. So you, you want to be able to believe what's rational in this process. It will really help development. So doing hard abilities is like, oh yeah, okay, rationally, I just did that. Cool. I can believe I can believe that. And that will help stabilize the belief sort of part of your brain because you can get you can overbelieve. 
you can over believe and not have it actually do the thing that you want and have it negatively impact what you're doing especially if it's not grounded or rooted in something practical. Anyway, um, <laughs> there's lots of people who believe that what they're doing works and that they believe that they can do things and they can't, and it's not. So this is why we teach, you know, things in which you can provable, repeatable, verify. Uh, I mean, even the precognition skill right? You're, you're, if, if you're flipping cards and you're seeing that you got it right, you know, that's a tangible, oh, I saw that. I got that. Something was happening there. The precognition skill occurred. I saw it through the evidence of my eyeballs that it happened, right? And so these are things that will increase and strengthen development. So, um, Those are some easy ones. Um, there's also some more subtle ones. Okay, we did remote viewing, right? Remote viewing is up there. Um, so now here's the fun part. Um, what can be a psionic skill? Question mark. The answer is anything in which you use psionic outputs to affect matter and energy around you to create a change. That's a wide open book. So um, like so wide open that people often don't realize how wide open that book is. So uh, let's talk about a fun one. An old one, actually. So when you go back to, uh, if anybody ever wants to just have fun, um, with this topic, uh, like dig, see if you can dig up some stuff on the internet about ESP, which stands for extrasensory perception, which is just an old terminology going back to like the forties, fifties and sixties, seventies, uh, about like psionic skill building or abilities. Um, uh, it, it kind of got taken over uh psychic came in and took over as a term like you know talked about their psychic powers psychic abilities that kind of took over but earlier on it was esp and uh, if you want to see if there's any fun stuff to dig up from the olden days about esp um it's kind of a fun topic to see where some of the old the older thinking uh around it was um but anyway something that um old ESP people used to talk about was something called cloud busting. So um, by staring at a cloud, a low cloud, preferably, you want to start with a low one instead of a super duper high one, just because it's easier to start that way. Um, and you are practicing a kind of pyrokinesis at a distance by telling the molecules in that cloud to uh, move faster. And when a cloud, the water vapor in it warms up, it dissipates, right? So, and if you've ever, if you've ever watched clouds disappearing into nothing, that's what's happening, right? The vapor, water vapor is getting warmed up from a condensed state into a, a uh, gaseous state disappears. Um, I've spent a few afternoons uh, laying on the grass, uh, messing around with that to some success sometimes uh, and sometimes not. Uh, but like everything, it's physics. You can go the other way too. You want to tell water molecules to get colder and denser and slow down and make more cloud. You can do that too. So again, with enough outputs and enough skill building on this skill, this becomes weather control, psionic weather control. Someone who's really good at that can make clouds, make them go away. That means you can make rain, means you can make thunder, you can make hail, you can make all that stuff if it's just about how cold and how dense you have to make a cloud to do the thing that cold dense clouds do right or to make them go away or to make 
hurricanes or tornadoes, right? These are all about a combination of adjusting temperature and pressure, which are telekinesis and pyrokinesis. So affecting small things is one way of developing the skill. Trying to affect something that's larger, farther away is another way to develop the skill. You can start wherever you want on that one. I, we usually recommend people start small, but you never know when someone's got a propensity for something. And so we encourage people to try all kinds of stuff and see what works. And if you find something that works, it's like, oh yeah, do that. Practice that thing if it works for you. Build that muscle. So weather control. Um, telekinesis, uh, if you can move an object heavy enough, big enough, um, then you can lift yourself up off the ground. Right? So you can levitate or you can fly. Right? Most of the, most of the really advanced like superpower skills are just about amplitudes. Like being able to do something enough to get enough amplitudes out of that you can do that. Mm -hmm.